Welcome to Inside the Firm, a podcast dedicated to small business owners and hosted by entrepreneurs, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Each week, they take you on their journey of how to start, run, and grow a business by bringing you inside their architecture and real estate development firm. Get a behind the scenes tour of how these business leaders manage their clients and foster company culture while creating new and innovative projects. And now your host, Alex Gore and Lance Psycho. Lance the Carpenter Psycho. That's my name now? Now it is. I haven't done any carpentry lately. That's Bill. That is Bill. L the Carpenter Gore. I did a little bit. I made a door. And then I and then I wrecked it because Jip Creek went all around. Oh yeah, your little hatch into your crawl space. That's about it. But anyway, speaking of that, we couldn't do what we're doing without something way more sophisticated than a hammer, and that's a computer. And where we get our computers is from Dell. Because Dell gives us great discounts. And not only can we get great discounts, you can get the same great discounts too. So go to dell.com forward slash inside the firm. Put in your email address. They will give you a coupon uh, for sometimes five, eight, eighty percent. I made up that last number. That's not true. Not but true. if they did, that'd be cool, and you can thank us. So help support us, support you, support Dell, support everyone in a big circle. Keep this train rolling. Keep it rocking. Dell.com forward slash inside the firm. Make it happen. There is only one quarter left in the longest year ever, but it's still not too late to meet your goal of increasing your firm's productivity. That's right, ArcCat has the tools any size firm needs to compete, whether it's using ArcCat's powerful search engine to find product data, downloading high-quality specifications, getting the right BIM for your model, or using the patented spec wizard to configure a specification in minutes. Best of all, it's free and and requires no registration. So check out ArcCat.com, that's A-R-C-A-T.com, to start building better content today. Make it happen. Lance. Me? I've already given you one chance. One chance. Should I give you a second chance? You know what? I uh, I believe in second chances, Al. I'm, glad. I'm a believer. Convince I'm a believer. me. Yep. Uh, so you will throughout your... We have been in business now for... And according to LinkedIn, I actually made a little post today. Is there a little post I'm going to add to that or a little thing blurb to the end of, end of today? But I checked. Uh, I looked and looked at my... Uh, profile here and apparently we have had f9 going now for 10 years and 11 months did you know that al 10 years and 11 10 months? years and 11 months wow. so over the course of nearly 11 years uh we have had some some relationships with clients go sour and i just want everybody to know that that is a normal thing you are you are not going everybody's not going to get along right but what is imp- what is important is to keep in mind the perspective, just a perspective, right? And and sort of and have and have a uh, try to have a forty thousand foot view of the whole thing. So we had a um, we've had a few we've had a few relationships go sour, and I've talked about them before, but we've also had them pick right back up, and the former clients come back to us, surprisingly, in a couple instances and even say, hey, it was not you, it was me. And we've given them a second chance and they've given us a second chance and it's actually worked out. Well, I had I had one of these former clients call, call us the other day and it made me, it reinforced this point. And I think it's a, a point that maybe doesn't get made a lot. And especially if you're in a service-based industry like we are, obviously, of how important it is maybe to give the second chances. Maybe you even thought in the heated meeting where maybe there was yelling, uh, or however you guys broke up, that you had a whole a whole different idea of why the relationship, the business relationship, didn't work out. Maybe they had a whole idea why, right? Here's another reason too. Um, how you react to a situation, any situation, any task that you have to do, whether it's architecture, construction, running, playing a football game, is different depending on what level of stress you're in. A lot of these breakups come in a high stress environment. Yes. And then the decisions that you make, the things that you say are different than you'd make in a low stress environment. So when they're rethinking about a second chances, either you are or they are, you're probably in a low stress environment. You see the situation, you can look back and go, oh yeah, maybe I said something, right? Or maybe we made the wrong decision, but like, ah, 
that's not how I'm feeling now. That's not how it really is. It was just, and they, you might not even admit it because you might not know of that, that concept. Like you were only at that high point because of a high stress and, point. and how have you, how have you evolved as a person? How has your business evolved as a person, as a, as a business? How has their business evolved since then? And how have they evolved as people since then? Right. How much has maybe changed since then and given you a different perspective? So all of the think about all those things and then there's a, there's a, there's an article that I found that I think is is really pertinent to this and because you know one of the things that you hear often is it's new clients are much more expensive to get than repeat clients right and that's kind of that's kind of the, the one of the points of what I'm making today is instead of me going down and meeting this client for the first time trying to have it to sell to them instead it was a phone call I actually in the middle about the first third of the phone call I actually addressed um, my concern and my concern was, Hey, I just want, just want to clear the air before we get further. And I, f- I, I remember we, we didn't have a good time at the end and they clarified for me what they thought, why we didn't have a good time. Turns out it was, it was not because of us and it was not because of them. It was because of a third party. And so then I was like, Oh, okay. And then I, I explained, Hey, well, I'm an adult. You're an adult. Like we are, we're big enough people that we, we, we are okay with putting water under the bridge and moving on with life and trying it again. Right. Because then I was able to go back to the back. This is a, I was coming back from a job site, got the call, sat down, wrote a proposal, sent it off. Like the, the time it took me to do that compared to me courting a new courting and advertising for a new client. It was maybe 10% of what it would have taken. Oh, easily. Easily, right? Yeah. So that's the value in it, right? So I want to, I want to read a couple paragraphs here from this. This is a, it's an article by um, Marketing Sherpa. Uh, yeah. Nice Mar- name. MarketingSherpa.com forward slash. If you just, if you just Google customer uh, first marketing chart, how to get customers to give your company a second chance, right? Um, so unsatisfied customers are far more likely to say a company doesn't practice customer first marketing than satisfied customers. In fact, that was their most frequent response when asked about a company's marketing. And it's a valuable thing to get those satisfied customers with customer first marketing because four out of five satisfied customers, 82% to be exact, will keep shopping with a company and give another chance if something goes wrong. 40% 40% of satisfied customers said they were very likely to keep going with the company. That one blew my mind. So less than half said they're still willing to do it. And 42% of customers said they were likely to stay loyal. Do you think some of it is the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know? Exactly. And how much more of a pain in the butt is it to uh, do, do put yourself in the reverse role, right? The, revo- the role that I explained was I have to spend all this, you know, 10 times as much money, effort, time to go find it, you know, to court a new client. Same thing would have, would have to happen on their end. Yep. They're going to have to do in the reverse, that kind of level of thinking. Right. So, um, the quote, this guy says, uh, I believe this data is an eye opener. If nothing else on average in my business in the line of work, it is approximately, there you go. Five to ti- five to 10 times more expensive to acquire a new customer as it is to retain an existing customer. Said Jonathan Furman, founder of Furman Transportation. Um, so I think that's that's my big lesson of the week is I, I think a third chance. Fool, it's like George Bush said, right? Isn't it what he said? Fool me once. Yeah, yep. Fool me Sh- twice. Wait, wait, fool, fool me once. <laughs> shame on you. Fool me twice. Sh- did he forget? He totally forgot. He totally botched it. Fool me third time. Fool me, you know. Throw a shoe at me. Throw a shoe at me. Yeah. Yeah. So... <laughs> <laughs> now, duck it. Uh, yeah, duck. I I think second chances are warranted all day long for uh, customers, just because just because from a monetary standpoint, right, and all of the other points that Al brought up about what kind of a situation were you in before, and what was the circumstances, and now you're out of that high stress area and you're in the low stress again. And then maybe you can learn something. Maybe you restructure the contract just a little bit to better protect yourself, to protect them, all of that. Or you just address like, hey, you know, it came because of this third party, but I think everyone was heated because we were in a time slash money yeah. crunch. What will we do in the future in case that situation arises? Yeah. And hopefully you, maybe you've already, like I said, maybe you've already even evolved your business since then. And those aren't even 
though you've you've put some mechanisms in your contracts or how you operate so you can mitigate against those third party issues. There you go. There you go. There you have it. Now what do we got next? Tip of the day. Tip of the day. Walk a job site as a company once a month. How does this apply to you? If so, obviously you guys know we build some of our own projects. We took uh, the entire company. Just I think there was only six of us at the firm. There was more out and about other places. Um, to one of the job sites that we're building, one because one person just wanted to, you know, I wanted to show them some stuff. But I didn't think that, you know, I thought we were just going to eat there and not much to it. But just milling around, people asking questions, me explaining how the Gypcrete process works. Uh, showing people what uh, the the guts of mini splits look like, mm-hmm. like what's behind it because it was all just framed up. Um, them seeing different insulation and asking why there's different insulation. In me, different me, places. I asked him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was Lance, that was Lance. I'm uh, we used rock wool in the office because it absorbs sound better than your regular bats and or spray foam. Anyways, it, it was great. And I just said once a month, just to give you a time frame. if you are not the, the head of the firm, uh, you could go, or you don't have a construction site, ask the contractor to come out. If, if you're just a single guy, say, hey, once a month, I'm going to go to one of my job sites, right? Or just show up. They, they'll, probably, they'll probably know you. Um, it might be nicer to ask first. Walk it. They might, honestly, they'll probably say something that you didn't know before or that will help you out. Or they'll say, even if they say something like, hey, next time you should do it like this. There you go. Just take that with a grain of salt. See if you want to do it. See if you don't. If you are just a leader of a small team, take your small team. Say, hey, it's Tuesday. Let's go grab uh, some fast food or whatever, and let's go to Project Site X. Go take a look around. Be that leader. Take everyone. You will learn something. You will see something. I mean, if you don't like walking around construction sites, then why are you in our? If you don't like the smell of it. Yeah, that's very true. Oh. I don't even know. I don't. I can't even. I you. I, you know. I don't know if you get a second chance. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I mean, I'm a little bit of heated right now <laughs> because of that statement. Maybe I'll calm down in the future. <laughs> Reconsider. But right now, no. Yeah. Uh, Al is doing an excellent job at, con- at general at managing and general contracting on this on this uh, this almost perfectly designed little tiny. It's a, it's a small house. So it's how many square feet? Fourteen thirty six. And he's doing it by executing lean construction lead times especially in this difficult time of COVID and all the nonsense about uh, people rush buying refrigerators and now you can't get them till January. So how are you mitigating that out? How are you maintaining this excellent construction schedule? Well, it's excellent uh, when set up and what the client knows. <laughs> how I'm imagining it is, is two things that, that I've learned. One, which we didn't execute perfectly, but Get all of your finishes, fixtures, all of that picked out before you start construction. Whoa. We didn't do that, but that is a great, great idea. The second time when you're scheduling, a lot of times you'll schedule, you know, you're going to go from insulation to drywall, from drywall to paint, and you'll put like two to three days in between each one of them because they naturally go longer, right? Don't do that. Do everything, condense it so that it's back to back. And then lead all those two to three days that you would have had in between them, lead them all to the end. And the reason why is because then when something comes up, like then if you have all those two to three days in between, you might not order something because you have all those fluff things. The lead times are now extending, right? Mm -hmm. So like appliances are extending. Um, Carpet for like... You might not know a lot of carpet is in stock and you can get it in 10 days. Well, the client might not want that. And then it's a four to five week lead time. Um, uh, Exterior doors should probably only be like six weeks out. They're at least eight weeks out. Interior doors should be four weeks out. They're at least six weeks out. Six weeks out. So what, um, so that scheduling helps, but also when you're scheduling it may like have a lead time, calendar or have on your schedule something to let you know hey it's scheduled that we're going to be doing installing appliances at this date or cabinets at this date i need to have that let's say it's a lead time of eight weeks i need to order that you know 10 weeks before something like that and a lot of these places um let's say you're worried about 
oh, it coming too early. Depending on, on the thing, like if that was going to happen, none of my things are coming too early. But a lot of them get shipped to, let's say, Home Depot or first. Say, okay, keep it there, and then I'll, then I'll tell you when to give it to me. And normally they can do that. Normally they're a couple days out. Mm-hmm. Um, so just, just be aware of your lead times uh, and plan, plan accordingly. And, and, and maybe before you start a project, make a list of those big items. And here they are. Windows, six weeks about. Uh, doors, interiors. It depends. If you're getting eight foot ones, it might be six weeks. Door exteriors, eight weeks. Carpet, 14 days or five weeks, <laughs> depending on the carpet. Wow. Floors, four to eight weeks. Appliances. Appliances, some of them are even out. So I would say four to eight weeks. Right like, now. Yeah. Some of them, you just can't even get them. I, yeah. I, I think you're probably looking at this, to be honest, ladies and gentlemen, probably until Q2 of 2021. Like, mm. because the, the lead times are already extended into Q1 of 2021. So it is what it is. Just prepare. Yep. Yep. It, like, for example, um, we had a garage door. They said it was four weeks out. Uh, then I checked back in after two weeks and they said it was six weeks out. That's a 50% increase right there. Yeah. So yeah. be aware. Yeah. You know what else you got to check in on and you got to have a lead time on. Got to have a handle on. You got squirrely. Ha- he, he moves around quickly. Frisky little fella. <laughs> yep. Who is that? Nick. Nick reads. Hello, best friends. I hope you all had a great week this week. A reading. Great moments are born from great opportunity. And that's what you have here tonight, boys. That's what you've earned here tonight. One game. If we played them ten times, they might win nine. But not this game. Not tonight. Tonight. We skate with them. Tonight, we stay with them. And we shut them down because we can. Tonight, we are the greatest hockey team in the world. You were born to be hockey players. Every one of you. And you were meant to be here tonight. This is your time. Their time is done. It's over. I'm sick and tired of hearing about what a great hockey team the Soviets have. Screw them. This is your time. Now go out there and take it. Herb Brooks. That's right. That's, it, a, that's a fourth quarter speech for the fourth quarter of this year. That's exactly it. That is exactly it. It is the fourth quarter of 2020. If you are almost every business... Uh, waits for this quarter because the first quarter, the first quarter, you're just coming, you're coming out of that last quarter, and you're you're seeing what's everybody went off, off a big break. Um, you're in a holiday hangover. You're in a holiday hangover. There's new budgets coming out from everybody, from the government all the way down to the private sector, and everybody's trying to figure out uh, what they can spend their money on. You're looking at new projects in your house, maybe because. Maybe, maybe this year you hosted Christmas and all of a sudden, or whatever holiday, and all of a sudden you're like, wow, I don't have enough space. I need more space. Or Yeah, you're finishing up your taxes, doing your taxes. Starting to finish up. You're starting to look at taxes, right? Q2, the tax bill comes. Got to pay those taxes. Pay tax, man. Yep. Q3, if you're like us, you're probably looking at you know software, hardware upgrades. Where would you go for that? Well, you first of all, you go to Dell.com forward slash inside the firm. Gotcha. gotcha. You can make that happen. Yeah, I was confused. Yeah. And if, if Autodesk would ever be a sponsor, I would be happy to plug them too. But, uh, but, but now we'll bleep out their name. <laughs> if boo, boo, boo. Yeah. So you have all those expenses Q1 through Q3. Q4 is the time to make the profit happen. So I want everybody who's listening to think about what, what are you going to do for this last quarter, this last 90, 90, 90 days? to make your business profitable and make sure you're in the black this year so you can give out bonuses, you can head into 2021. Hopefully, we're going to have an amazing economic recovery. Think about the Q4 as if you are playing to win. Speaking of playing to win. Uh, RevitRocketShip.com? You could, you could go to RevitRocketShip.com. Oh, are you talking about the game ARE Jeopardy? You can talk about the game ARE Jeopardy, Al. 
Here we go. Let's bring in the team. Question number one. Question number one is very pertinent because here is the backstory behind the question. If you were going to size a furnace for a house, how would you do it? If you answer this question correctly, correctly, you will know the first part to doing it. Here is the question. What are the heating BTUs per square foot in climate zone five? Heating BTUs, climate zone five per square foot. A, 30 to 35. B, 35 to 40. C, 40 to 45. D, 50 to 60. Do -do -do. Do -do -do. There's a B guess. There's a C guess. There's a B guess. There's a C guess. All of you are wrong. It is D. Wow. 50 to 60. So, for example, if you have a thousand square foot home, you times it by whatever climate zone you're in per those numbers, right? Then you get your number. Let's say it's 100,000, and you know that you're going to get a 90% efficient furnace. The second part is you times that by 90, so by 0.9, right? So that you'd get a 90,000 BTU furnace for your house. Make sense? That's it. That's, <laughs> that, that's, that's it. Okay. Now let's, let's be an electrical engineer on this question. Nice. Current is measured in dot, dot, dot. A, volts. B, watts. C, turtles. D, <laughs> sorry. D, amps. <laughs> that one cracked me up. Not gonna lie. <laughs> it's gonna be D A A. It is D amps. <laughs> Not volts or watts. It is amps. I only know the questions I ask. Lance. It's my turn? Yeah. Finally. The turtles threw me off. Because that was a real yeah. <laughs> Number three. These lo these tubes produce light when an electrical current passes through gases inside the glass tube. Is it A, halogen, B, fluorescent, D, LED, or C, LED, D, and e, incandescent? Again, it's... Uh, these tubes produce light when an electrical current passes through gases inside the glass tube. A, halogen, B, fluorescent, C, LED, D, in, e, incandescent. What do we got? We got B, A, I can't read that. B, B, and Mark is a winner already. Uh, the correct answer is B, fluorescent. What's what's the score so far? One, two, Solid goose, egg. goose egg. Okay, Ross is in the lead. All right, you guys can tie Congratulations it up. to Ross as well. He just passed a, one of his first ARE tests. Uh, number four, what is an advantage of using incandescent lamps? A, they are cheap. B, they are compact. C, they have a warm color. D, they are dimmable. Or E, all of the above are advantages. Uh, looks like everybody's got some answers. We have E, E, D, E. The correct answer is E. Oh, so we got a tie. No. He did it. Three, three way tie. Yeah, three way tie. Yeah. So, Marcosaurus, Mark, come Marcosaurus. on in. Mark, come on in for the last question. There you go. Ready? So uh, I will watch first person to write the correct answer and we'll go through everyone. If you don't get it wins. All right. What is the preferred noise criteria in decibels for a bedroom or a private office? No, everyone, everyone is stumped. <laughs> we got three wrong, bro. No, that doesn't work. Uh, 20. Hint of the day, Ross is closest. There you go. 35. Nope. 22. Nope. Nope. Keep guessing. Second, it is between the last two. 14 is not it. 32. So, 32 nope. is not it. Okay, one more. Ross gets it with 30. Champion Ross, 30. Speaking of champions, you will be a champion if you go to RevitRocketShip.com. You will learn Revit from yours truly. It is awesome. Uh, thousands of people have done it, approved of it. It's uh, guaranteed. If you do not like it, you can ask for your money Literally back. Literally guaranteed. And I will give it back to you. If yeah. you love it, 
you just increased your Revit skills like a rocket ship. I just want to uh, end the podcast with a some perspective since we started with perspective about giving clients uh, second chances. 10 years ago, I was laid off. Ten year, 11 years ago, I was laid off. 10 years ago, I started a company in the heart of the Great Recession. Nine years ago, I got divorced. Three years ago, I married my soulmate. This year, we ranked number one in two-year revenue growth and won our BizWest bracket. Don't let failure stop you. Let it build you. Make yourself great again. Hashtag MYGA. See you next week.